everyone. Guess what? Woohoo! It's summertime! I hope you're having as good as of a summer as I am. <laughs> Who could that be? Well, I better go check. Dogs, stay in your crate. Okay. Oh, I don't see anyone out here. What's going on? Huh, I wonder who's here. Hey, Mrs. Strawberry, I'm down here. Oh, Fuzzy, welcome. You came to visit me. Hey, Fuzzy, happy summer. How's it been? Well, it's going pretty good. I just got a little bored and wondered what you were up to. What are you up to? Hmm? Well, I'm so glad you asked, Fuzzy. You know what I'm doing? What? I'm doing research. Have you heard of it? I'm doing art history research for next year. What's research? Well, research is when you um, look up a topic and you can choose several books and um, you learn more about it. Let me tell you what I'm studying about. Oh, I don't know, Mrs. Strawberry. It's summertime and I don't really like reading very much. Oh, come on, Fuzzy. It'll be fun. This is a really interesting topic. Okay... So, Fuzzy, I'm studying about the artist Leonardo da Vinci. Ever heard of him? No. Okay, well, he was a Renaissance artist. I am studying three different books. Here they are. Can we get a look? Okay, right there. Um, I am studying Leonardo da Vinci by Richard McCann. Oh, you, did you fall over? Okay, I guess you're all right right here. I am also studying, once again, Leonardo da Vinci by Kathleen Kroll. And, Leon, and hold on a second, what's the third book? As well as 100 Artists Who Shaped World History by Barbara Cristal. So let's see. Oh, there's a picture of old Leo there. Let's see what we can find out about him. Okay, but I don't think I'm going to like this. No, actually, Fuzzy, Leonardo was really interesting. He was actually born 1452 to, and he lived until uh, 1519. Okay, what else does Crystal say about Leo? Well, I'm glad you asked. What was his first job? Well, this is what he did. According to Christel, he worked with an artist as an apprentice. So he learned the trade from the artist. He learned the following thing. From the artist, Andrea Del Verrocchio, he learned the fundamentals of painting. He also got to work on Ver some of Verrocchio's very famous paintings. We'll take a look at them later in another book I'm studying. Oh, wow. So what happened to this Leonardo guy? Did he stay a apprentice forever? Actually, no, he didn't. He decided to apply for, an, for another job. After a while, it was probably like, that's enough. I'm gonna, I want to get a real job. So he wrote a letter to this guy named the Duke of Milan. And man, he talked himself up. He told him about all this these technical things he could design and guess what he got the job and fuzzy that was a pretty sweet deal because a duke is royalty wow yeah i know pretty cool right so he stayed in that job according to crystal um 17 years that's a great work record this text also explained that during his time, he worked on some techniques called Sufmato, which is kind of a blurry, like, um, foggy sort of background, a foggy sort of landscape, or chiaroscuro. Chiaroscuro? What is that? It's where... Um, if you have some dramatic lighting, like a bright light, um, then you have some highlights, some very strong highlights and shadow. 
Oh. This is Strawberry I moved over toward the window. Is this Chiaroscura? Well, it is a little bit. I see a big highlight and some shadow. Good idea, Fuzzy. Well, Fuzzy, guess what else I learned? What? Well, apparently he wasn't content working for the Duke of Milan. So, in 1507, he got a job with Louis XII of France. Whoa. Yeah, he was a court painter. Pretty cool. He was painting pictures of royalty. So, was that all? Is that all there is? I want to know what happened. I want to know more details. Oh, okay. Well, you're, you're in luck because I have two more books to tell you about. Leonardo da Vinci by Catherine, Kathleen Kroll has so much good information. On page 15 of her book, Kroll explains, here, let me read this little passage to you. Sciences and medieval times did, did, excuse me, did include, they included astronomy and mathematics, but it was still an age when people believed in magic. Oh, I believe in magic. Oh, well, I guess you have um, something in common with these people. Uh-huh. But Kroll also goes on to say, Fuzzy, that um, Leonardo was lucky to be born at the time he was. This is what she says on page 15. Atop of a wave of change, Leonardo was Leonardo da Vinci. He was born at the right time in the right place in 1452 and in Italy, because by then it was officially the Renaissance, a glowing burst of firework in, fireworks into art, architecture, literature, and science. And nowhere was the Renaissance spirit brighter than Florence, Italy. Whoa, yeah, he was in Florence, wasn't he? Yeah, he sure was. Hey, Fuzzy, I have a question for you. Yes? Do you ever draw in a sketchbook? Sure I do. Oh, well, I was just asking because it says here that... Ooh, watch out. It says that... Leonardo um, had lots of sketchbooks that he carried around with him all over the place. Let me see what else it says. On page 68 it said, we call them notebooks, but they are bound like, they are bound like typical notebooks. Mostly they are loose sheets of paper, casually gathered together and wrapped. Okay, Fuzzy, let's see what else it says. It says that Leonardo went out of his way to make notebooks um, difficult for other people to read. Ooh, he was trying to encrypt so people couldn't see it. And you know what, Fuzzy, in the, these notebooks, he, he did all kinds of technical drawings that we'll look at later. He created a bike and made weapons and catapults and all kinds of interesting new inventions whoa hey fuzzy and you know what leonardo da vinci actually had an enemy what who was it have you ever heard of michelangelo uh-huh okay well here's what it says about his relationship with michelangelo um, it says that he was his arch rival, and I think that Leonardo was in his 40s, maybe 46, and uh, Michelangelo was a little bit younger at the time. He was only 29, and he they were both painting battle scenes at the same time. And here's Kroll's quote. The two geniuses have never gotten along. Michelangelo showed no interest in science, to which, uh, which to Leonardo meant his art was inferior. Michelangelo once publicly insulted the other artist for his 
habit of leaving things unfinished. Oh, yeah, it's, it's important to finish things. But I think Leonardo did okay for himself, even though sometimes his works weren't 100% finished. I'd say so. Mm hmm Well, Fuzzy, are you getting tired yet? I have one more book to show you. No, I want to hear more. Okay, let's take a look at this book. Once again, the title is Leonardo da Vinci. Actually, First Impressions of Leonardo da Vinci by Richard McClanathan. Oh, her pet is kind of scary. Ooh. Okay, Fuzzy, here we go. There's a picture of Leonardo. Wow. What a beautiful painting. It actually says that this painting was painted by the young painter Raphael and that... Um, Leonardo was depicting the philosopher Plato. Hmm. He looks good as Plato. Did I ever tell you that I like to play with Plato? I bet all the kids out there like to play with Plato too. Not that type of Plato, Fuzzy. Well, he was not the type of Plato you play with. He was Plato, the philosopher. He came up with lots of good ideas. Oh, I see. Ooh, Fuzzy, look. It's one of the paintings that Leonardo made while working with Veraccio in his worksheet. Workshop, not worksheet. Oh, okay. I was wondering. Okay, yeah, this was made in 1473. Uh, to 1478, so it took him a few years, but he they did complete it. That's very nice. I wish an angel would come visit me. And what's in here? Oh, wow. It's the Last Supper. Have you ever heard of it? No, but that sounds very sad, a Last Supper. Oh, this is a very famous painting. It tells the story of Jesus and his disciples. Hmm. Yeah, when, when I look at the faces of the people, I can tell that they're talking to one another, and some of them aren't very happy. Ooh. Fuzzy, I forgot to tell you this earlier, but check these out. Look at these technical drawings. Ooh, is that a giant crossbow? Yes, actually it is. It says here, this giant crossbow on wheels is a version of a handheld kind that were actually used. This one is so big, however, that it probably could never shoot. That's what um, is on page 38 of this book. Mrs. Strawberry. What is this portrait? Oh, haven't you heard of that? It's the Mona Lisa. Fuzzy, this is Leonardo's most famous work of art. Ooh, Mrs. Strawberry, do I see Sofomato? Let me see. Fuzzy, I think you're right. It says, um, the portrait of a lady seen against a distant view of alpine landscape. There have been much guessing about as to who the sitter was, but no one knows. Hey, Fuzzy, look, check this out. Do you think that's a little, um, do you think that's a little bit of the charoscuro? You know what? I think you might be right. It's a little dramatic there. Highlights and shadows. Hey, look at this really cool drawing here. This is one from one of his sketchbooks. It is entitled Cats and a Dragon, 1513 to 1515. And these are pictures of cats. Uh, I guess those are dragons in the middle. Um, Leonardo actually had, oh, I see the dragon. It's right here. Um, Leonardo Fuzzy actually had a lot of pets. Really? You think he would like me? Oh yeah, I know he would like you. He loved animals so much that he didn't even eat meat. Hmm. I don't know if I could handle that. 
Well, you know, but he was a vegetarian, and that was probably kind of unusual in his time. I don't know about you, Fuzzy, but we've sure done a lot of studying, so we should probably wrap it up. But I just wanted to go back to the crawl book and tell you that uh, it says here, the end came in 1519 at the age of 67 as the Melazi, his most loyal friend, nursed him, Leonardo died, no doubt while describing his symptoms and diagnosing his condition. And that is on Kroll's um, page 104. And Fuzzy, I want to leave you with, Kroll did a really good job of ending her book. Can I read this to you? Sure. Here's what Kroll says. In the final analysis, Leonardo can be credited with not so much for specific discoveries as for a way of thinking. His devotion to sci the scientific method, investigating, observing, experimenting, and then forming conclusions, was revolutionary. He was open-minded, willing to toss out long-standing theories uh, if he could disprove them. You know, Fuzzy, that kind of summarizes why I love art so much. And Leonardo's awesome because he really, if you study him, he can really open up a person's mind to what they think art is. Because Woo! We, Fuzzy, we have done so much studying. I want to leave you with one more passage from Kroll. This is on page 113. Okay, yeah, I, I want to hear what's going on. Okay, here it goes. In this final analysis, Leonardo can be credited with not so much for specific discoveries as for a way of thinking. His devotion to scientific methods, investigating, observing, experimenting, and then forming conclusions was revolutionary. He was open-minded, willing to toss out long-standing theories, and willing to toss out long-standing theories if he could disprove them. You know, Fuzzy, this is what I really appreciate about Leonardo. So, you know, so many times um, people think that art is just on a canvas or a coil pot, but it's that. But... Fuzzy, it's so much more. And Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci really shows us that art is so much more than just a canvas. Canvases are awesome. Murals are awesome. But he drew mechanical drawings. He explored the human body and animals. And you know what? He he was very creative in his way of life and um he was always looking around him to gain inspiration and use creativity for problem solving so i think that that's really beautiful so let's read on this last sentence Kroll says most intriguing of all is the question what would leonardo be doing if he were alive today what do you think you would be doing, Fuzzy? I don't know. I think you'd be making slime, personally. Slime? I do not think so. Anyways, you know, what might he have been doing? I think he would have been solving some of today's problems. Maybe he would have been planning for world peace. Or, I but he would have been working with Elon Musk to find new ways to go to outer space. And maybe he'd be working on the problem of something like global warming. Who knows? But he's not around today, but we can all learn from his example. 
how can we use creativity to make the world a better place? Hey, Fuzzy, last but not least, I want to show my references. I've been talking about these three books all through the video, but this is where I got my information. Oh, huh. yeah, those are really good books. I learned a lot from them. Thank you, Mrs. Strawberry, for teaching me so much about Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, wait, no. Leonardo da Vinci. Happy summer, everyone. Do some research.